Hello, and welcome to On a Mission. This podcast is hosted by Mission West Virginia, a nonprofit organization located in Hurricane, West Virginia. Mission West Virginia changes the lives of youth and families in our state by recruiting foster families, providing life skills education, and creating community connections. This podcast represents the opinions of the podcaster and their guests. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only. And because each person is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm sorry I missed you last week. I had some health issues and was unable to get a recording completed. This week, we're going to talk about domestic violence and the impact of domestic violence on children. Domestic violence is a universal issue that affects thousands of individuals, children, and families every year. Also known as intimate partner violence, domestic violence can occur between current or former spouses and significant others, as well as sexual partners. Families can also be destroyed by abusive parents or family members, leaving a lasting impact on children as they grow into adulthood. In honor of October's National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it is crucial to spread awareness about the difficulties domestic violence victims experience in an effort to prevent and end patterns of violence that devastate so many lives. Domestic violence cannot be defined by one behavior, as it encompasses several forms of abuse, including emotional, psychological, verbal, sexual, financial, and technological abuse. These violent acts, or the threats to commit these acts, are used to establish or maintain power and control over a partner in an intimate partnership. To stay in control, abusers typically exhibit a pattern of behaviors with the intent of making their victims feel isolated, depressed, and hopeless. There's a power and control wheel that is often used, which is a, it's a diagram used to better understand the cyclical nature of abuse and violence in relationships. The abusive behaviors depicted on the wheel include coercion and threats, intimidation, male privilege, emotional abuse, economic abuse, isolation, using children, and mimicking, denying, or blaming. I'm going to pull up the power wheel and kind of go over some of those items with you. Coercion and threats are making and or carrying out threats to do something to hurt you, threaten to leave you, threatening to commit suicide, or reporting someone to welfare, making you drop charges against them, or making you do illegal things. Intimidation makes you afraid by using looks, actions, and gestures, smashing things, destroying your property, abusing pets, displaying weapons. Emotional abuse is putting someone down, making them feel bad about themselves, calling them names, making them think that they're crazy, playing mind games, humiliating them, and making them feel guilty. You may have heard me say male privilege and thought, what in the world is that? On this wheel, it's defined by treating a partner like they're a servant, making all the big decisions, acting like the master of the castle, or being the one to define men's and women's roles. Economic abuse is preventing your partner from getting or keeping a job, making them ask you for money, giving them an allowance, taking their money, not letting them know about or have access to family income. Using children, you make them feel guilty about the children. You use the children to relay messages use visitation to harass them, and you threaten to take their children away. Mimicking, denying, and blaming is making light of the abuse 
and not taking their concerns seriously, saying the abuse did not happen, or shifting responsibility for the abusive behavior, saying that they caused it. In isolation is controlling what your partner does, who they see, who they talk to, what they read, and where they go, and even what they wear. Limiting their outside involvement, using jealousy to justify actions. The cycle of abuse can trap victims in relationships and leave lasting effects on families, especially children. According to recent reports, approximately 10% of children are exposed to domestic violence every year, and about 45 million children will be exposed to violence at some point during their childhood. In many cases, domestic violence and child abuse occur at the same time, and children are at an increased risk of neglect, maltreatment, and sexual, emotional, or verbal abuse. Cases of co-occurring domestic violence and child abuse may also increase the likelihood for children to be victims of violence later in their life. Revictimization occurs when an individual is victimized more than once and often describes repeated cases of sexual assault and abuse. Individuals who experience domestic violence or abuse in childhood may be more vulnerable to potential sexual abusers in young adult and adulthood. Grooming, exploitation, exposure to pornography, forced masturbation, and sexual communications via phone calls or text messages are a few acts of child sexual abuse survivors of domestic violence may experience. Adult survivors may also face long-term effects on their mental and emotional well-being as well as a result of trauma they experienced in their childhood. Teens and adults may be more likely to resort to alcohol or substance abuse or other delinquent behaviors. They may be prone to suffer from depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. While statistics show that thousands of people suffer in abusive relationships every year and may endure the effects of trauma for years to come, Many victims break free from patterns of violence and lead happy, healthy lives for themselves and their family. National Domestic Violence Awareness Month helps highlight the struggles that abuse victims go through, as well as the resources and services that are available to domestic violence victims and their loved ones. For parents who believe that their child has been sexually abused or exposed to violence, There are also steps that they can take to address the sensitive nature of that situation. The initial step is for parents to ask the child directly. It's important for parents to approach the conversation thoughtfully, taking care to mind the location of the discussion and the tone of voice throughout the conversation. Creating a safe environment for your child to speak plainly about incredibly traumatizing situations can make getting the help that they need a little easier and faster for everyone involved. Following the initial discussion, the next steps is always to reach out to local support, including the police and CPS in your area. Through our THINK program, our educators teach middle and high school youth the importance of healthy relationships. Many young people today lack models of healthy relationships. A recent child trends survey of disadvantaged youth reported that while respondents could list general qualities of a healthy relationship, they reported no when asked if they saw many around them. More sadly, many youth said that they had little confidence that they would be able to achieve healthy relationships despite their aspirations to develop one. Our program offers young people, including young parents, knowledge of what a healthy relationship is and is not, as well as skills for handling the early chemistry of attraction and choosing partners wisely. Young people learn the building blocks of a healthy relationship 
and are encouraged to identify relationship qualities they find personally important. They are provided with several frameworks to help them assess relationships, both past or present, or even in the future, and to make important relationship decisions. They learn the red flags of unhealthy relationships and dangerous relationships and ways to exit those relationships safely. They identify the needs to change or improve in order for a relationship to continue. And they learn how to handle breakups and then move forward. So now we're gonna go over some warning signs of abuse. Some warning signs of abuse in the home or in a relationship include pushing for quick involvement, comes on strong claiming I've never felt loved like this before or I've never loved anyone like this jealousy excessively possessive they call you constantly or visit unexpectedly they prevent you from going to work because you might meet someone controlling behavior they interrogate you intensely especially if you're running late about who you were with, who you talked to, where you were. They keep all your money and they insist you ask permission to do anything. Unrealistic expectations. So they may expect you to be the perfect mate and meet their every need. Isolation. They try to cut you off from your family and friends. Accuse people who support you of causing trouble. They blame others for problems and mistakes. Always someone else's fault when anything goes wrong. Making others responsible for their feelings. So the abuser may say, you make me angry instead of saying I am angry or you're hurting me by not doing what I tell you. Hypersensitivity. They're easily insulted, claiming hurt feelings when they're really mad. Cruelty to animals or children. They kill or punish animals brutally. They may expect children to do things that are far beyond their ability, like whipping a three-year-old for wetting in their diaper. Or they may tease them until they cry. Use of force. Use of force during sex. They enjoy throwing you down or holding you down against your will. Verbal abuse. They constantly criticize or say blatantly cruel, hurtful things. They degrade you. They cuss at you. They call you ugly names. They might have rigid roles. They'll expect you to serve, obey, and remain home. They could have sudden mood swings. They switch from sweet to violent in the matter of a moment. They have a history of past battering. They admit to hitting a past partner, but says the person made them do it. They threaten violence. They say things like, I'll break your neck or I'll kill you. And then dismiss them with, I didn't really mean it. They use controlling behaviors using social media or technology. So how can you help victims of domestic violence? If you know someone in an abusive relationship, there are always ways you can help. First, listen. If possible, find a time and a place that's safe and confidential to talk to your friend or family member. Start the conversation by expressing concern. Say, I'm worried about your safety. Allow your friend or family to speak and let them know that you believe what they're saying. Number two, offer support. Let them know that they're not alone and that no one deserves to be hurt. Abuse is never the victim's fault. Assure them what they are feeling is okay and then ask how you can best support them. Third, provide resources. Encourage them to reach out to community resources or connect them with crisis hotlines, support groups, 
domestic violence shelters, mental health services, or anything else they may need. Help them make a safety plan and respect their choices. I know it's hard, but don't pressure them into leaving. It's never as simple as just leaving. There are many reasons people stay in abusive relationships. Offer them support and resources. Ultimately know it's their decision. Don't be judgmental or make them feel bad for staying in an abusive relationship. Let them know that you will be there for them no matter what choice they make. Remember, you are there to support your loved one, not rescue or save them. On average, it takes a woman in an abusive relationship seven tries to leave that relationship. So whenever they're talking to you, it may be that they want to leave but something is holding them back that control is holding them back that fear is holding them back if you need support we have a list of national and local organizations that you can reach out to in time of crisis and I'm going to read off the national ones because they can always get you in contact with our local ones or ones that are local to you The National Domestic Violence Hotline is www.thehotline.org. The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence is ncadv.org. Child Welfare Information Gateway is childwelfare.org. And Love is Respect is loveisrespect.org and you can also text the word love is all one word to 866-331-9474 or call 866-331-9471 to speak to a counselor all right that's it for us today guys If you would, go ahead and leave us a review on the podcast app in which you're listening. Uh, The more reviews we get, the greater our reach to others. And if you haven't already, go ahead and download our Think app. You can find all that information on our website at missionwv.org. And if you uh, just look through the most recent blog articles, you'll find a link to download the Think app from both Apple and the Google Play Store. Until next time, see you later. That's it for us today, guys. Please make sure to visit our website at missionwv.org to learn more about foster and adoption in the state of West Virginia or our Healthy Relationships curriculum. If you're interested in learning more about foster or adoption outside of the state of West Virginia, please visit adoptuskids.org.